You guys keep asking for build guide videos, so here is another one for you. This is the Z270 build guide featuring MSI Z270 Gaming M7 board, uh, also an MSI GTX 1070, and uh, a few other bits and pieces, including an Intel i5-7600K. Let's take a look. So to give you a rough idea of the parts we're using in this specific video, we're using a Fantex N2 Evolve ATX. As I said, the MSI uh, Z270 M7 board, as well as uh, i5. 7600K and a GTX 1070. We're also using 8GB of Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM, a 240GB Kingston HyperX uh, Savage SSD, uh, a 6 terabyte WD red drive because that was what I had available easily, uh, and a few other bits and pieces including obviously a 650 watt power supply, uh, and that sort of, and also a uh, 240 millimeter closed loop water cooler. If this is your first PC build and you're worried about specific parts, then feel free to either use all the parts in this list or check out PC Part Picker. They do a great job of making it very easy to select all the parts from a list of components available, all the ones that are compatible with each other. So uh, you'll make sure that you don't buy something that won't fit in another thing. So that's quite nice. And of course, feel free to leave the links to your PC Part Picker lists in the comments down below. So let's get on with it. The first step is installing your CPU. Installing your CPU can be a little bit scary, but it's fairly simple. Just lift up the arm to the right of the socket, lift up the tensioner plate, make sure that the golden triangle is in the right space, normally to the left hand side uh, bottom corner. Drop the chip in gently and then uh, drop the plates back on it and secure the tensioner arm and that's pretty much it. Next, you're going to want to install the RAM. Installing the RAM into a motherboard is one of the simplest things you can do. Just make sure that you're using the right ones, normally the slot 2 and slot 4 for these types of motherboards. Open the clips on either side and then line up the notch in the middle and then push evenly down on both sides and that's pretty much it. Since the order that you install things into the case can sometimes be preference, I personally like to put the power supply in and wire the cables to roughly where they're going to need to go. Installing the power supply is really easy, especially in this type of case where you just push the power supply in from the side, attach four screws to the back and then that's it installed. It sits on rubber feet so it's nice and quiet and personally I have the cables roughly pre-arranged, the 24 pin on the uh, sort of right hand side if you're looking from the motherboard side, the 8 pins up the top left hand side and the SATA cables where your hard drive bays are. Next we're going to install the hard drive into the hard drive tray and connect the SATA power and data cables. This can vary depending on what type of case you have but for me it's very simple, just drop the hard drive into the tray and then swivel the arms on the side shut and then just push the drive into whichever slot you fancy. Connecting the power is very easy, it's an L shaped connector so it only goes on one way and it's a fairly simple thing, same with the actual data cable. Next we're going to attach the SSD to the tray on the back of the motherboard. This may vary and you'll likely just want to put it next to your hard drive for simplicity especially when it comes to power, but since this case has this nice easy to access tray, we're going to do it that way. For me, the SSD sits in a little tray that has four screws on the side and then clips in with rubber mounts, so very simple to do. Again, connecting the power and the data cables are very simple, they only go on one way. I think it's probably obvious at this point that I'm not that great at cable management, so if you want a cable management video, feel free to check out some of the other people who are a lot better at it than I. Next, you're going to want to install the motherboard. Do be careful with doing this, is it, uh, the motherboard is, well, the motherboard, it's the sort of heart of the PC, it's what everything connects into and it can be quite sensitive so just be careful when you're placing it in. One thing I want to note before we install the motherboard is if you're using an aftermarket cooler, which if you're using an i5-7600K or 7700K you will have to, as Intel doesn't include a stock cooler in the box, you will likely need to install a backplate. These are just pieces of metal generally that have screws in them or various sort of connotations that go through the back of the motherboard through the holes that surround the CPU socket. It's very simple to do, in this case you just push it through and there's a few sort of uh, plastic washer nut type things that go over the top uh, just to sort of reasonably hold it in place. So you just do that for the four in this uh, specific scenario using an Acasa Venom A20. There are plenty of other options so do consult the manual for both the motherboard, the case and the CPU cooler. The first thing you're going to want to do is install the IO shield. Make sure you put it in the right way but it is just a case of pushing it into the slot on the back of the case. Make sure you also have all of your motherboard standoffs in the case. These are little sort of metal pieces that these screws go into. Make sure that they're in the case and refer to your case manual for that. There are also nine screws for a standard ATX motherboard like this one and of course don't forget to plug in everything in afterwards.
These little connectors down here are called the front panel connectors and they connect to the power button and the reset button and the hard drive activity LED and all that sort of stuff. And in this motherboard, they are this small connection down here. Now some other motherboards, you also have a slightly bigger connection, often with labels directly either on, uh, under the pins or CT, you know, sort of a screen printed underneath. Uh, this one we're going to refer to the motherboard manual uh, to see exactly what we need to plug in and where and then we'll plug in these uh, very small, fairly delicate uh, connectors. The next thing you're going to want to do is install your CPU cooler. The first thing I did was attach the radiator to the radiator mount for this case. It's a very nice option, it's one of the reasons why I absolutely love it. Make sure you plug in the fan headers for the actual fans as well as the pump. In this motherboard they're actually quite difficult to get to so do be careful with that. Uh, and otherwise when you're actually installing the block or the actual cooler onto the CPU, don't forget to put a little bit of thermal paste and don't forget to remove any plastic films that actually cover any copper elements or anything like that that actually touch the CPU. Otherwise it's just a case of not over tightening it and uh, otherwise you're all good. In possibly the final hardware step you're going to want to install your graphics card. This is a fairly simple procedure, just make sure that you do plug in the power connectors and have it installed properly and all screwed in. Make sure that the PCI lock is pushed down and then line up the card and just push it in. Screw it into the back of the case with the included screws, you might need to remove a few sort of cover brackets from the back of the case and then make sure that you plug in the power connectors. Some cards don't necessarily need power connectors so if yours doesn't have one don't worry about it but if it does you do need to plug it in, it is a necessity. So that's pretty much it in terms of building the PC. If you want to know how to install Windows, there's plenty of guides out there. It's pretty much just a, a case of clicking next, next and next until it's done. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you will want to, once Windows is fully installed, either use the disk that comes with the motherboard uh, to just get the initial drivers or using another PC and a USB stick, go to the motherboard manufacturer's website, specifically the product page for the motherboard you bought and download all of the drivers that are on there and then install all those. If you use the disk, I recommend all, once you've actually installed the drivers, also going to the motherboard manufacturer's website so you can update the drivers. You can also update the BIOS too. That's generally a simple procedure of downloading the BIOS onto a USB stick, rebooting your PC, and then inside the BIOS by normally hitting the delete key, uh, selecting the easy flash mode or the whatever flash mode, and selecting the file you downloaded from the USB stick. Otherwise, that's pretty much it in terms of software. Now we're gonna go benchmark it and see how it performs. In terms of performance, this system is amazing. It does a really great job at 1080p and 1440p, and even does pretty well at 4K too. If you're looking for a 1080p or 1440p gaming machine, this is the sort of spec that I would recommend to you every single time. The i5 is perfectly fine for gaming. You really don't need an i7 for this sort of stuff. The performance difference just isn't that massive. And a 1070 is a really great choice for even uh, 145 for its 1440p gaming at very higher auto settings, as you can see here with GTA 5 running at very high settings, even at uh, you know Doom and Vulcan uh, using uh, ultra settings, it's still 75 FPS, so it's still a, a fantastic experience overall. In terms of temperatures, it actually does really well here. You're looking at around about 70 degrees on both the CPU and the GPU, although depending on which cooler you end up choosing will obviously depend on uh, the temperatures that you get, but it is a really impressive beast. So there you have it, that's how to build a Z270 based gaming PC and specifically how well this one performs. Otherwise, if you want to know any more about the parts that are in this PC, I've left links to Overclockers UK and Amazon in the description down below. If you could use those, especially if you're planning on buying any of these parts, it would help me out significantly. It genuinely does keep the channel running, supports me, supports these videos and all that sort of stuff. So if you could use those or even just the more general links for anything else, that would be really appreciated. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe and like, and of course, let me know what you thought of the project, the build, my, uh, you know, process in building PCs. I mean, I've been doing this for like eight years, so hopefully I'm half decent at it nowadays. So uh, yeah, that'd be uh, nice to hear from you. It's nice chatting with you guys and just have, having a conversation about these videos and more than just a one way me talking to a camera kind of thing. So yeah, that'd be quite nice to, to hear from you. And otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you on Monday for a great PC from uh, the guys at Oblivion Systems. Uh, and otherwise, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.